thank you all for coming. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. And I hope I will tell you something interesting. So, what is my motivation? My motivation, or not only my motivation, is to understand uh, the geometrical content of, of this little simple uh, effective theory where it's, it's just an effective action for string where uh, our fields are uh, metric, two form, which is usually called a B field, and a scale field, which is called usually a dilaton field. Uh, for me, I use a slightly generalized version where H prime is sum of H, which is a closed free form, and GB. Uh, so it's, it's just a type of supergravity where you forget about uh, any fermions and all unknown known fields. And the main idea, the main idea, the geometry behind this, this action is this idea to generalize the concept of, of, of language with connection. So of course I'm not the first, uh, we are not the first ones in Pranio who thought this. There's plenty of papers exploiting this kind of idea. For example, you know, Congrats, Chicago, Stable Stable Water, who describes supergravity as general geometry, also, also M theory, some things from M theory. Uh, on the side of double field theory, of course, it's one of the most important things in double field theory, and in particular, we are inspired by work of Hohn and Seabach. And also, the, the closest to our closest to our interpretation, Garcia Fernandez, who modified these ideas in, in this paper uh, to include also the heterotic supergravity. And what I would like to show you is that actually not only the geometrical description exists, but it can be actually used to, to derive or, or understand some, some intriguing things which are happening with these kinds of actions. So I hope And the, 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 the center point of, of, of our approach is, is something which is called current algebraic. So, so most of you probably know what current algebraic is, but let me remind that current algebraic is a combination of four things. So first of all, you have a vector bundle. You have the morphism, vector bundle morphism from E to vector field. You have some, some fiberized metric on, on your E, so you have metric on each fiber and our linear bracket on the sections of this like the bundle. And all these things together have to somehow cooperate in a nice and expected way. So first of them is that it respects in some sense the module structure on the space of sections. So if you multiply one of the inputs by some functions, you know what's happening. And you exactly use this anchor back to, to handle to handle this this expression. So you have a vector that acting on a function here. Then of course the bracket should classify some kind of Jacobi identity, and the easiest way how to say it is that this operator is the derivation of the bracket. And of course, you have heard today Lorde algebra, so this is exactly saying that this bracket is a Lorde algebra on the space of sections. Uh, then, of course, there is some compatibility between the pairing and the bracket. And the, the most interesting and GD thing, of course, is that the bracket is not skew symmetric. But the symmetric part of the bracket, so if you put the two same sections inside, you know what's happening, and you again use the other objects to describe what's happening. So these are grand algebraics, uh, problems in direction. So what I like to think is that the grand algebraics are the natural, the most natural generalization of quadratically algebra. So so real algebras with non-degenerate compatible symmetric bilinear form with your bracket. And of course, if you if you put n to be just a single point, then you recover quadratic real algebras. So it's really a natural generalization of quadratic real algebras. And some, some historical points, so they appeared first in some axiomatic way as a doubles of Libe algebra by like Mackenzie and Shu. Uh, then of course there is a relation because it's a conference of health structures with L infinity algebras. In particular, every current algebra is an example of L infinity algebra. Uh, the construction is quite similar to what we say uh, seen today for for Rolle algebras. And also one thing shown, a right showed that show that current algebra are symplectic and manifolds of degree two. So 
non-negatively graded manifolds with homological active field uh, <coughs> and the symbolic section. Uh, and the most well-known and also very useful example for us is something which is called generalized tangent bundles. You simply take the manifold and take the sum of tangent and cotangent bundles to your manifold. Your anchor is just a prediction, and your pairing is just a canonical pairing between, two, between these two dual vector bundles. Then you fix closed free form and <coughs> construct this kind of bracket. And one can easily check that it really satisfies all the axioms of prime algebra. And uh, one, one technical note that geometry of this general extension bundle is usually called generalized geometry. So, so that's, the, that's the origin of the word generalized geometry. And for these reasons, it's also called generalized extension bundle. But it's just the geometry of this kind of uh, vector bundle and all of its you know, modifications and generalizations, etc. Okay, and on every current algebra, there is a natural object which always exists there, which is called usually generalized Riemannian metric or just generalized metric. Because the bracket should be here. And it's a, it's a choice of maximal positive subbundle of your vector bundle with respect to your pairing. And if you choose a subbundle, you can take orthogonal complement to it with respect to this pairing, and you obtain a direct sum decomposition of your vector bundle. And in fact, then you can define an involution such that B plus is, is plus one eigenbundle, B minus is, is minus one eigenbundle. And then you can define another fibrolized metric which uses this store, which in fact always defines your positive definite fibrolized metric on E. So, so generalized metric is a special kind of positive definite fibrolized metric which is compatible with your original pairing in this set. And what is, what is good? As I said, on every vector bundle where, where E is a vector bundle and this is a fiber metric, there exists a generalized metric up to some technicality. It's like you have to take connected component of the base and on each connected component you can construct one. And also, also the orthogonal group, so, so morphisms which preserve your metric, they act transitively on the space of generalized metrics. And as an example of generalized metric, Take, take this generalized tangent bundle, then one can show quite easily that each, each, each V plus has, is uniquely a graph of a bundle map from Tn to T star, and this, this bundle map is parameterized by a metric, by a Riemannian metric in the two form. So, in a sense, generalized metric naturally contains G and B kind of on the equal footing together. Uh, and last note, one can also show that. Uh, but can also show that the existence of generalized metric is equivalent uh, to, to the statement that you can always reduce the statue group of the vector bundle with the metric OBQ to OB times OBQ, where P is dimension of P plus Q dimension of P minus. And then, if you have generalized metric, so, so as I said, I want to generalize Levitch with connections. So I want, of course, some kind of metric and some kind of connection. So this is my generalization. So I take a map, which is our linear map, from sections times sections to sections. Then I, of course, define a covariant derivative operator along every section. And I force it to satisfy two axioms, which are completely natural. So first of all, if you multiply by f the second input, you know what happens. You again act as a differential operator on f by rho psi. And then you can take out, take out smooth function out of the first input with no penalty. And of course, because current algebra always contains the metric, you impose the condition that this, this connection has to be compatible with your, with your current metric, which, which you always have on current algebra. And this is called current algebraic connection. Uh, there always exist some current algebraic connections, in particular because you can simply construct some vector bundle connection, which is compatible with your metric. This can be always done by partition of the unity arguments. And then define your connection of quantum algebra using this formula. So it's not all right, it's vector bundle connection. And you simply define it like this, and you obtain quantum algebra connection. So, so the set of <coughs> connections is non empty. And what is interesting, and then Galtier find out in 2007, and also independently, I think Alexei and Chu, that there is a, there is a generalization of torsion, torsion operator. The problem is that 
this is not enough. This, this kind of usual combination, which clear, with clear geometric mean, is not enough. We have to add another term. But adding this another term, in fact, makes funny thing. It may, makes this thing skew symmetric, in fact, in all three inputs. So this is a really free form. And it's C infinity and linear in every input. So it's really a good behaved, well behaved tensor on E. And in particular, if you have well defined tensor on E, you can impose that, that it is zero. Otherwise, you, you will obtain some pathological things. But if it's a tensor, you can sim simply say that torsion is torsion, uh, connection is torsion free if this torsion matrix is zero. And in fact, one can, on some examples, show that. This requirement of tor torsion freeness really requires you to, to use this generalization, not just vector bundle connections. It can happen that there are no torsion free vector bundle connections in this sense. <coughs> and then, of course, you want to define what Levitch vector connection is. And so I choose a generalized metric, which is, which is my central object. And I say that this, this nabla is a Levitch vector connection on E with respect to this generalized metric, and we use this notation, it's a Levitch vector connection on E with respect to V plus. If the covariant derivative preserves the sections of V plus, there should be sections of V plus, of course, and it's torsion free. And this is kind of, at the first glance, it is kind of a strong, strong condition because you impose compatibility with two different metrics. But one can show, and Garcia Fernandez showed in 2016, that the set of all Levitch vector connections on any grand algebra in this sense is always non empty on any grand algebra. And so this is a good thing. Then, at the first glance, there is also a bad thing, which is summarized here, that there is a quite a lot of them. So there is no unique Levitch vector connection, as in the Riemannian geometry. So, for these reasons, you cannot write down explicit formula for. Uh, as in the Riemannian geometry. And in fact, there is a really quite a lot of them because uh, the space of all Levitch vector connections is, is isomorphic to the space of sections of some vector bundle. And this vector bundle has quite a big rank for if P and Q are not 1 or 0. So there is quite a lot of them. Which, which actually is a good thing, as you will see in the video. And then, interestingly, a lot of people are discouraged by the fact that there is, n there is no def definition of, of, of Riemann tensor or coverage tensor. Uh, the, the, na the nature of definition as a commutator of covariant derivatives minus you know, the usual formula it doesn't work. But there is some, some analog of coverage tensor, which we stole from, from Hohmann and Zimbach in a paper in 2012, uh, according to Referee's comments. <laughs> 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 So, so we were asked to compare our, we had some definition of coverage tensor and we were asked to compare it to this one. And we thought, okay, this, this one is actually nice. So <laughs> we are using it since then. And it kind of, you take the main definition, then add it once more with completely different order of inputs. And then add one correct term. And one can show that this, this kind of combination really kills off the whole problem with non tensoriality So all the non-tensorial problems are kind of cancelled, and this is well well defined tensor. So of course it's not, not clear what does it mean, why why this is the good definition. And interestingly, uh, this Riemann tensor, this general Riemann tensor, have, has all the usual symmetries you want from Riemann tensor. For example, you have interchange symmetry of two and two inputs. And then it's q symmetric in two and two inputs. So, so this is very good thing. There is also some algebraic identity where, where the cyclic permutation of something plus can is equal to something which is proportional just to the torsion, this, the, the, the torsion free form I told you before. So it's really technically quite useful thing, although we don't know what does it mean. But I don't think there's enough symmetry so that you can define generalized Ricci tensor as a tensor on the whole, whole E just by taking trace into, into inputs. And it is well defined. There is no other tensor which can be obtained up to a sign from, by, by this kind of trace. And 
it's symmetric. So it's a symmetric tensor well defined on whole E. So technically very good thing. And just the terminology, we say that this, this connection is Ricci compatible with your generalized metric if this Ricci tensor is blown diagonal with respect to this decomposition on E plus on E minus. So also quite geometrically natural thing you can you can impose on a tensor and very useful identity as you will see. And of course because we now have a tensor which is defined on whole E, is a symmetric tensor, you can do the trace of this tensor. So we will claim very naturally, very easily, a pair of scalar curvatures. So first of all we can we erase one index uh, using using uh, the current metric G E is this which which E metric. And then you can also raise the index using the generalized metric, the, the positive definite one you have from the definition of generalized metric. Uh, and now there's very nice observation. If you if you have two two connections, two Levitch inter connections with respect to, to the given generalized metric, which have the same divergence operator. So divergence operator can be also defined by naturally. This is a defined operator which takes the section and gives you a smooth function. And then if the two language interconnections have the same divergence operators, then these scalar curvatures are the same. And the off diagonal blocks of the Ricci tensors are also the same. Completely the same dependence. <coughs> and there comes the, the I know, the most important thing. Uh, so, so, sorry, can you go back one slide? Sure. So, uh, somewhere you said that the Ricci tensor is zero on plus minus. Uh, I, no, 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 it's a property of the connection, and I say that the connection has the Ricci compatibility property if this is true. So not, not for all connections this is true, of course. I say that the connection has this property of Ricci compatibility if this so, is true. So is that a, something you use at some point, that concept? Yeah, I will, I will it's just, just here, <laughs> you will see. Okay. Okay, so this is this is some, some, some observation I take. Generalized generalized tangent model, TM plus T star M, with H twisted of non breaking. H, H is arbitrary, close P4. And as I told you, I choose generalized metric and each generalized metric corresponds uniquely to a pair of G and B. So I have a connection and I take a Lichita connection. And I impose on this connection some additional condition on this divergence. So this is another, you know, I, I force another condition on my on my connection. And I want my divergence operator to have this special form, because phi is a scalar function. So, and we then write that Naba is part of this small, this is a subset of, of this, this, this guy here. Good thing is, again, there exists for every phi. For every phi and for every e plus, there exists connection. From this set is again non empty. And then the main statement, the theorem is that if under these assumptions, these backgrounds, GB, which are hidden in, in generalized metric, in phi, which is hidden here in the divergence condition, then this triple satisfies the equations of motion or solves the equations of motion given by the action S I started with on the first slide. If I only give the scale curvature, this, 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 this one is zero, and my connection is Ricci compatible with B plus, so if this, this is zero. So this is theorem kind of telling me how to interpret geometrically the equations of motion for, for a, a low energy effective action with, with G and E and phi. Uh, by this observation, also note that this statement kind of doesn't depend on which 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 particular connection I choose from this subset, because if I fi fix divergence, then this this quantity is unique. This quantity is unique, and also this quantity is unique. In fact, in this case, my choice is always zero. And here it is. This is always zero. And what is what is good about this this description is that it behaves as expected under current algebraic isomorphisms. So it's kind of covariant, covariant in this sense. So if you have two current algebras, 
connections on these current algebra, so we have generalized matrix on these current algebra, and all of these objects are related by the isomorphism. So, for example, the matrix is, you know, the, 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 your isomorphism preserves the generalized matrix, and your isomorphism preserves the connection, then these quantities, in particular the equations of motion, are completely invariant, uh, covariant, sorry, <laughs> covariant in this sense. For example, they hold for the one connection, if I don't they hold for the other connection. <laughs> okay, so this is the main, the main observation, the main claim, how to describe the equations of motion. And we said, okay, let us, let us use this to our advantage somehow. And we started with something of, of causal claim reduction type observation. So we, we assume that we have a principal G bundle with a compact B group. Uh, we denote by this its a joint bundle. Uh, it's non negative definite Turing form because we assume that our B group is compact, so this is a neg negative definite uh, symmetric linear form. Uh, we choose a connection on our principal bundle write down its curvature and choose a free form on the base. And one can show, it's, it's, it's written down, that there is a structure of, of current algebra, I'm right in here almost, as I will tell you in a second. But for any of this data, there is a current algebra on this vector model. So Tn plus a button plus this Rn. I don't want to tell <coughs> you the details but the pairing here kind of pairs this one to this one and uses the killing form on the middle term. Uh, the anchor is just a projection on the first, first, first term. And the breaking, the, this is the most complicated thing, the breaking kind of combines H0 twisted dogma bracket together with the Atiyali algebraic bracket of Tm plus Gp. Tm plus Gp is, if you choose the connection, is, is isomorphic to Atiyali algebraic. So, you know what the bracket looks like, and you kind of mix those together to obtain a bracket on this on this vector bundle. And I was saying almost here because this structure is current algebraic if and only if or Jacobi identity was if and only if this condition is satisfied. And if you look at it, it just means that your contracting part class of first contacting part of P with respect to your killing form is, is trivial. So because H0 is up to some Minus and half exactly the potential for for this uh, for for your functional uh, path and the representative of the functional path. But in fact, almost current algebra means that just the Jacobi identity doesn't hold; otherwise, everything works. And we in fact don't know. Uh, we, sorry, we in fact don't, do not need Jacobi identity to hold for our current algebra. You can still define connections, Riemann tensors, everything. Uh, all statements are true. So this is just just a kind of technical convenience which can happen. And then, of course, you can choose generalized metric on your on this current algebra and again show that it uniquely corresponds to a, now a triple of things. Now, uh, remaining metric on the base, two form on the base, and the theta, which is a one form on n with values in GP. And in fact, this measures this measures the difference between A and, and some general connection. So this can be said because this in fact is a space of, this is isomorphic to the space of uh, principal part connections on P. And, and then one can use the completely the same language and, and show that, that the Levitschika connections on this quant algebra can be used to describe geometrically Equations of motion of this more complicated action, where <coughs> there is more fields now. I mean, in fact, there is this term, which in fact is is a kinetic term for 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 Young Mills theory. And so this is kind of Young Mills theory combined together with with uh, with a supergravity, and it's sometimes called the Einstein Young Mills gravity. So there is a name for this theory. Uh, and in fact, one can one can fit a bit this this action by spe choosing special special principal bundle as a fiber product of some young males <coughs> principal bundle for for heterotic groups and the spin principal bundle spin nine one bundle m is the ten dimensional and in fact 
this action B cut can be rewritten as a heterotic supergravity. And this condition here, in fact, then means precisely uh, that this four second classes of these two vector bundles, uh, first bundles has to be equal, which is called anomaly cancellation condition, which arises to my knowledge in, in this heterotic supergravity. So for the anomaly free case, it is an honest uh, yes, yes, yes. In this case, uh, in, with this special principle bundle, it's really uh, honest for that argument. Right, thank you. I was just going to ask, so before, you, you can have any case group? I mean, you only yes. have the EA because you... Compact, just a compact one. In this case, it has to be compact for for us to work. Somehow, it even works for non-compact groups, but then there is more technical details you have to choose. But it can be done, for example, for torus bundles. We, we have a formula in the paper for torus bundles that also works everything. So there is no special requirement under the groups at this moment for our purposes. I'm not claiming there is sub interesting physics for arbitrary groups. I'm not saying that. And what is interesting is that this this current algebra, this E prime, <coughs> is always obtained as a as a reaction <coughs> of a of a Dorfman bracket, H T Dorfman bracket on general tangent on P. So this is this is well known thing. Uh, this is how in fact this current algebra on E prime is constructed. So it's no surprise. It, and this H is on of very, very particular form. It has to be P star of H zero fullback of H zero plus Chen Simon's free form of A. And if you have, if you, and uh, how this, how this reduction works, it really resembles a symplectic reduction. I don't want to go into details, but there is a way how to take product algebra with some extra structure, reduce it to obtain a new product algebra. And all of the structures in prime are inherited from, from E in a natural way, so you really can do this. And in particular, what you can do, you can take the generalized metric on E upstairs, and find a condition on G and B, because B plus is parameterized by G and B usually, under which conditions this reduces to generalized metric on the base, which is parameterized by G0, B0, theta. And this already gives you some, some causal line like conditions on G and B. So it really forces G and B to be a very special form. In fact, it's written down here. So first of all, it forces G and B to be invariant with respect to group action. Okay, that's not a surprise. You want to do causal applied reduction. And then you can decompose, of course, G invariant vector fields as a sum of base vector fields plus sections of uh, sections of the agent bundle. And then G and B have to be, has to be a very special work form, which is not, again, not very surprising because this is exactly what's happening in ordinary causal applied metrics. This is exactly if you replace 1A, 0, 1, it's exactly what you obtain in ordinary causal applied. So it's not a big surprise, but you obtain also some condition on the B field <coughs> at once here. Can you just go back one slide? Because I'm, I'm interested. So when you say synthetic reduction, is, is that like the Marsden Weinstein reduction using a moment? Uh, no, no, no. This is the more, more general using a um, poisotropic uh, sub manifold. So you take this, yeah, this kind of thing. Because you basically take some sub bundle and take its orthogonal complement and portion out uh, the kernel of the kernel of the form, which is exactly this guy here. So you again obtain something which is non-degenerate. In fact, because as I told you, current algebra is in fact are symplectic manifolds. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly a symplectic reduction. So then, but is this symplectic reduction still symplectic? Yes. Yeah, because you obtain a current algebra again. Yeah. So it has to be a current <laughs> single element. Okay, and then having this in mind, uh, we, we try to examine the, the, the connections. So you take the, you examine whether some connection, Lavishi the connection upstairs can be reduced to Lavishi downstairs. And the answer is yes. There is a pair of connections, one upstairs, one downstairs, where there should be phi zero here. Your dilettons are simply, your dilettons is, is a G-invariant function, again, quite a natural, natural assumption of your dilettons field. And then this, this connection 
natural reduces to, to number prime. I don't want to say what means natural reduces, but if you look what how the reduction looks like, it really <coughs> reduces naturally. And then one can show because this is true that number is richly compatible with V plus, if number prime is richly compatible with V prime plus, and the scalar curvatures are related by this very simple formula. That should be plus here, sorry, not the typo, plus here. And this gives us a theorem which we call Kaluza Klein induction. So if GB and phi have this special form, which is written here, and G0, B0, theta, phi 0 are the field downstairs, uh, then there is some strange relation because there is some non trivial curvature of the connection coming up. So you have to realize somehow you have to add cosmological constant to your action upstairs or put it to zero and then you then the double zero has to be minus one six dimensional g. Then the equations of motion of for the action as upstairs are equivalent because it's written just here, it's written just here. Uh, are equivalent to, 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 to those downstairs. So for example the equations of motion of heterotic supergravity can be obtained from types of supergravity upstairs in this principal bundle if you impose this special kind of symmetry on GB and phi. And just to note, of course, the reaction of current attributes is quite old thing, and it was discussed in super detail in Pushkin, Kalkan, Gautieri, Magda, and Mati. This, this is where these heterotic current attributes are very well described, also in the Shevard paper in 2015. So this was the first, first application, at eight minutes, so I hope I will catch you in the next one. And our second application of this observation, which is something called Poisson duality. So, so we, I, I, I won't recall the historical form of Poisson duality. I will just recall the, the recent one, which uses the geometry of Poulan algebra, which was done by Shevra in 2015 and recently in 2017. Uh, how Poisson duality can be described using uh, reductions of Poulan algebra again? So, so first of all, my starting data is a many pair. Many pair is a pair of D algebras where D is equal to D algebra together with this Lagrangian subalgebra. So uh, maximal isotropic half dimensional subalgebra. And we assume that it integrates to a pair of D groups, such as G is a like, closed subgroup of D. So these are <coughs> our data. And then, of course, very trivially you can view G as a principal G bundle, of course, over the point. And then, of course, you can view it also as a G bundle over its space of left coset. This is also a trivial observation. And then start with H twisty Dorfman breaking upstairs, where H is Chen-Samus preform of the only connection, only D connection which is there, which is left in your left Malakarta form, which is a connection one form in this case. And you can reduce it using these two ways. Either you can reduce it by D, then you obtain the Lie algebra, of course, the quadratic Lie algebra I started with, with the exception of funny sign due to the convention, but it's not very really important. And then you can reduce by G, and you obtain exact current algebra on n times D, where the anchor map is fibrous extension of the left dressing action uh, of, of the Lie group G on D. Left dressing action is simply you multiply the representant of your class uh, with D over G, but by by, by your element of D from the left. So this is the lattice action you look at the generators. And this is the anchor in this case. So you obtain this pair of current algebra, and then you can do the following thing with generalized matrix. So you choose a generalized method in your current algebra E prime D, so it's just the Lie algebra. So generalized matrix in your Lie algebra is just a maximal positive subspace with respect to this uh, to this pairing, so it's half dimensional positive subspace with respect to your, your, your form. Then you can take this subspace and form a subbundle, trivial subbundle n times your class. And this is, of course, generalized metric is in this exact form algebra, n times d. I'm saying exact form algebra, I don't want to define it. It's just class of form algebra, which is called exact form algebra. This is so, so called exact form algebra. And what is, what is important about exact current algebra is that they are always isomorphic to the standard current algebra on the base, on the, on the, same, on the same manifold, T plus T sign, with H twisted over 
one bracket. This H is not unique, but its class, its Deram class is, so there is always a unique Deram class such that it's isomorphic to, <laughs> to uh, the standard form of algebra. And one can fix one of these isomorphisms from double G and to prime G and use it uh, to induce a generalized metric here. And generalized metric here is always a pair of GMB. So you obtain a pair of background GMB and also H. Don't, don't forget about H. So you have GB and T, GB and H. And you can, you can form sigma model with best to innovation term targeted in this, in this closest space using this background GB and H. And the claim, the claim of Poisson integrality, and what, what Poisson integrality is, that if you fix this e plus in D, then you can basically choose any Lagrangian sub with G, and all the models are, in some sense, equivalent. And in particular, if you if, if your many pairs actually many triple, I don't want to say what many triple is, but if you have a many triple, it integrates to the triple of E group, so you have two subgroups, G and G, G, G star now, then in fact if you interchange G and G star, this is some this is this is the original Poisson integrality of Green Chicken Chera from 1990. <laughs> and we we said okay, so so we should verify this on the quantum level, right? So, so can we somehow compare the effective actions of the two theories? Okay, so let's do it. So choose choose a connection on G. So this is some algebraic object here, and using the same tricks, so move it to to the to, to the current algebra to the exact current algebra, and then use the isomorphism to move it to the uh, standard current algebra. We obtain a connection which is Lebesgue with a connection with respect to this B plus, which we call the GMB. And one can show that it's, it's very easy to see that by construction, uh, the curvatures of the, this connection and this new connection here are the same. In particular, this is originally a function, so this is in fact a constant function, which is equal to this one. And this connection is actually compatible with respect to this general static, and only if the, the, this new one is compatible with B plus. Okay, so we almost are done, because we know that equations of motion are equivalent for all of them. But there is a tiny little problem, of course, that we don't know how, how this phi should look like, because we constructed G and B using general symmetric, and how does phi look like? How does the Leverton field is supposed to look like? And this can be, in fact, done by simply saying, OK, we want our connection number, this is just the initial recognition, we want it to satisfy this divergence condition, which is required to interpret it as an equation of motion. And so we enforce this condition and look, is there some phi? And the question is not in general, so you have to impose some, some technical properties on your real algebra. First of all, it must be unimodular, therefore uh, all adjoint operators have to be traceless. And also, one showed that this number zero has to be divergence free, so the divergence number zero uh, is zero. In fact, this fixes it uniquely. As I told you, if you fix the divergence of Lebesgue definition, it's uniquely uh, the, the, for the purposes of equations of motion. It doesn't. It, there is no more freedom for number zero. For in fact, it doesn't matter which number zero you have chosen, as as, as, as it is divergence free. Okay, and then it started to be more complicated because you have to again make some technical assumptions, as I'm saying here. You have to assume that PG is so called complete group double, which can be said that there exists some special splitting of your money pair. Uh, but if it is special and if it exists, then one can show that it always exists around unit of the group, so somehow locally it always works. So completeness means that it works everywhere. And then uh, under these assumptions, you can find the formula for phi. In fact, you can find it explicitly, so write down a very formula in terms of uh, epsilon plus, some, some blocks of f, and there is also a Poisson tensor, or quasi Poisson tensor on, on your manifold. And you obtain an explicit formula, which is, and the good thing is that there is no freedom, of course. It's unique up to, because it always plays a role just as b phi, so it's unique up to an additive constant. So after an additive constant, you find how phi should look like, and in fact, again, for many triples, you, you can show that this, this formula for Dilaton is in fact precisely the formula for Dilaton in Poisson 
T plurality or duality, which was discovered by path from, by studying the path integral of, of the sigma model by Von Unge in 2002. So in some sense, it's, it's good that we verify that the formula makes sense. And then, and this is satisfied, you have the local, then GPM file satisfies the equations of motion on, on N, on the sigma model action, uh, sorry, low effective action on N, if and only if this number zero we have started with is richly compatible with, with the metric and the scale to which is zero. And in fact, as I told you, the connection, there is no freedom in connection now. So, in fact, this is just a system of equations for, for this for this subspace of a lead algebra. So, so in fact, you obtain just a set of algebraic equations for some subspace. And by solving these algebraic equations, you can find backgrounds on, on this on these effective actions on all these process spaces. So again, independent on G. <coughs> okay, and I think I'm, my time is over. So there is no time for dreams. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> I will skip my dreams. Okay, so I don't really. One minute, one minute. So, so the problem is that, that we have no really good non trivial examples and solutions of these equations, which is kind of stupid. And maybe it's. The problem is that it's not. Maybe we, we would have to have. We would have to add Ramon Ramon fields to the picture. Otherwise, there wouldn't be no solutions for the motion. So, this will make things course, much more complicated. We would have to invent how to incorporate Ramon Ramon fields in this description. Of course, there is still general geometry lacking to describe fermions. So, we don't know how to incorporate fermions in the picture. But what could be done, probably, this is more optimistic part that. We can start in fact with any principal D bundle, and this is also how uh, how Paolo formulated this cosmic duet for this can be done for any kind of uh, setting where you have principal D bundle, not just D. And then you obtain a kind of this kind of triangle which hides a lot of interesting geometry. In particular, there are some the reductions of current algebra give you some nice relations between characteristic classes. Uh, the free form here, free form here, free form here, and maybe this will give some 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 very, some some kind of topology to the unity. So this is very optimistic uh, kind of note. I, I would like to finish it, and thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so my question is like. Um, from right from the start, it's like equation 13. You have this uh, condition that you had for the dilaton field or something like this? Uh, you mean the equation, how does dilaton has to look like? Oh, you mean this? Right from the start, I mean, like there is this you, I, I, no, divergence you condition. Mean this part? Yeah, yeah. Could you maybe comment on like what that means? Like, is there a geometric way to think about this? Like no. Uh, <laughs> no, to be honest, yeah. this equation was obtained right. by, by the following trick. <laughs> We, we looked at all the Richita connections, <laughs> right? We calculated these quantities, you know, this uh, R plus and uh, of diagonal components of the Richita. And we said, okay, if we put this to zero, <laughs> we will obtain exactly the equations of motion of supergravity. Okay. And how to write down that these parts of zero, and this is exactly this equation. Right. Yeah. So this is the, you know, the complete answer. <laughs> I think in double field theory, that's an um, integration by parts. Yeah, yeah, in double field, exactly, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's a good comment, thank you. In double field theory, in this home uh, paper I, I cited, no, not, not really cited, but for 2012, uh, this is exactly, uh, they show that this condition is equivalent to, to uh, this Levitschera condition can be integrated by parts in, that in the, in some integral. Yes, very thank you. If you apply it's just naive questions, if you apply the definition of Levitch Vita connection to ordinary Romanian metric, it, it will not be exactly the Levitch Vita no, connection. No, you lose some. You lose some. Yeah, so you, you cannot fill the gap, right? 
There is also a problem that for 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 this standard well algebra, you would kind of think that your connection should contain uh, the ordinary uh, ordinary Riemann tensor of uh, of Levi Chilton connection, but that's not true. You lose it you, because you kind of symmetrize it, so you only have symmetric part of, of, of the Riemann tensor. <coughs> There's also some work by Mario Garcia Fernandez. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you know, you know, you know. I know. I, 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 I in fact, cited him. Kind of cited him. Here. This is his paper. And he also uses current algebraic connection. But same as, because he uses mostly this paper by Tom Blasik and Gustav Wodan, uh, where they actually don't use the Riemann tensor. They, they kind of use only Ricci tensor, which is defined on V plus times V minus, so they don't have they don't have Ricci tensor defined on whole E, mm -hmm. and for that reason they can they cannot also define uh, define the scale curvature in this super stupid way. So they cannot just take the trace of the symmetric tensor. So they have to induce some spinner structure of the <coughs> algebra, and then use some square of Dirac operator to obtain the. In fact, they obtain the same scale curvature. But uh, they have different uh, rigid tensor. So. Yes. So, but what's the relation between uh, the, uh, the their other? their rigid tensors exactly my plus minus component of our rigid tensor ah. to my knowledge. So they kind of so in many cases they don't zero. have they don't have plus plus minus minus components. That means what very often is zero, right? Yes. So, um, so you have these sigma models in these closest spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of closest spaces can you get out of this? What kind of homogeneous I don't, I, I've never so really it's uh, it's tried to understand the final calculus. Yeah. So now you've got to distribute the connection. Can you form a geodesic equation? <laughs> Actually, I never thought about this. But there are kind of, there can be some kind of, what I know that kind of Ricci flow equations can be formulated, oh, that, that be but I, I'm not sure about it. Uh, if, if, or maybe not just a GDC equation, but I often think, I think in the Riemann tensor, there's the deviation of nearby GDC. Yeah. So could I think of that Riemann tensor as defining what we're trying I, I, I think that would be very problematic because kind of, yeah. if you look at the definition, you know, this, this would be clearly yeah, that's a usual, thing. usual thing, but what what is the thing where you, you know, completely change the order of all, all the objects and sum it? You know, I, I think this is sort of my problem in the sense that as a physicist, I know what I'm doing with the connections. Yeah. And I know what I'm doing with the that's, that's, that's I right. do things that I Yeah, that's right, right for feeling, and I also feel bad. That <laughs> <laughs> we don't offer, we don't offer, uh, we don't offer some geometrical reasons why we want to use this special super strangely looking tensor. Our only motivation is that it gives you the equations of motion in the end. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>